Hey friends, thank you for joining me. We are on part four of learning to hear God. Part four. So if you missed part one, two, and three, I will link them below on YouTube. Um, we talked about how our own misconceptions can he keep us from hearing God. We talked about in part two, how our location matters if we are um, drawing back or drawing near, proximity matters. And in part three, we talked about how distractions can keep us from hearing God. So let's jump in to part four. And this is a big one. This is probably one of the biggest ones. Um, and I'm packing kind of a lot in here, but this, if you watch any of them, it is very important that you watch number four because it is a big one on why we do not hear God. Okay, so a hardened heart, a hardened heart can keep us from hearing God. I'll say it again, a hardened heart can keep us from hearing God. If you ever read the Bible, have you ever noticed that Jesus always addressed people at a heart level? I even think he loved the Pharisees, but he just knew that he had to get past their hearts and pull down all those strongholds and all the ways that they were thinking wrong to even have a real conversation with them. So, you know, I think Jesus is more loving than we think. All of his ways are actually good. So let's look at Matthew 13, 15. I'm um, reading from the New Living Translation. It says, for the hearts, the hearts of these people are hardened and their ears cannot hear and they have closed their eyes so their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. Oh my goodness. So God's heart is for you to be healed. He wants you to be healed from the emotional pain. He wants you to be healed. But the hearts, when they are hardened, are incapable of doing that. So it looks like there's a problem, right? So when your heart is hardened, your ears cannot hear. Okay, let's look at one more verse in Ephesians 4, 18, Ephesians 4, 18. Their minds are full of darkness, full of darkness. They wander far off from the life of God or the life God gives. Notice the life God gives. He's not trying to withhold anything from you, right? Because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. Wow, wow. Okay, so, you know, it's interesting that Greek word for hardened is, is like stone, right? It's actually like if you have a callus or arthritis or even like a new bone it's like a it grows over and it becomes the hardening it becomes a wall that literally is walling you out from enjoying the life of god god's desire is to heal to give life more abundantly but when your heart is hardened you wall yourself off okay so reasons for a hardened heart, reasons for a hardened heart could be bitterness and unforgiveness, right? An unforgiving person is not going to flow from a tender heart. There's going to be walls and those walls are going to keep them in a place of captivity. So bitterness and unforgiveness um, also a root of rejection. It just could be that you believe that you are unloved. And so there's self-protection and you just wall yourself 
off and you're not enjoying that intimate relationship with God and that he wants to freely give you. So a heart and heart, um, you know, it's a heart of unbelief. And really we have to just, you know, when I read the word, I always say, just read what it says. You don't try to change it. You just accept it. And the word actually says that it's an evil heart of unbelief when unbelief is actually an evil heart. And so, you know, you could be like, say, Jenny, you know, you call me evil. No, I'm just saying what the word says. You know, my job is just to tell you what the word says. So God's, we have a problem. A hardened heart is separated, uh, keeps us out of a loving relationship with God. And yet a loving relationship with God is really what we crave. So God has a plan, praise God. It's his loving kindness, right? His loving kindness is what leads us. It's what draws us back in, you know, and, and he does it in such a way that we know that it was him that did it because God is the author and finisher of salvation. He is the author and finisher of our faith and praise God. It's his loving kindness. Praise God. Praise God for his loving kindness when we have been hardened by the deceitfulness of our own hearts. Let's look at Hosea 11.4. Hosea 11.4. I led them with cords of human kindness. I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek and I bent down to feed them. Oh my goodness, the tender heart of our Lord and Savior. He wants to keep you from that, you know, that we talked about in part one, that religious misconception of God that develops in our hearts. And God wants to say, hey, you know, let me show you who I am. And it's his loving kindness. It's his tender mercies. It's his goodness that leads us to trust him and that leads us to repentance. So let him feed you into a place of hearing. Let him feed you to a place of hearing. God wants to give you life. He wants to lead you into an open, spacious place of freedom, a place of life that you can enjoy in him. One more verse, Ezekiel. have a lot of verses today, but it's good for, to read the word. Ezekiel 36, 26 and I will give, whoo, he's giving it to you. There you go. He's not withholding anything. And I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. New heart, new spirit. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. There you go. Praise God. New heart, new spirit new ears to learn to hear him more clearly. Hope you have the best day. Like, subscribe, share, and tune in for part five on our next video. Be blessed.